Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Rachel. We're two Canadians living on our 39-foot mainship trawler, living an adventure of a lifetime. We invite you to follow along as we travel 6,000 miles through Canadian and U.S. waterways around America's Great Loop. Good morning. We had an interesting night last night with some interesting smells from that plant you can see behind me. Uh, but we're just preparing to leave. We're going to stop and get some fuel. There's a nice cheap fuel place right here. And we're going to carry on north to Jekyll Island on the Idrakosa Waterway. Should be about four hours. Uh, but with this little fuel stop, it might be more like four and a half or so. Hope we're having a great day. Now crossing from Florida into Georgia. A new state. A new state. How exciting. We're just going past this inlet here and that's where the line is between Florida and Georgia. It's taken us a long time to get here but yeah. we're here. Yay. Yay. Who knew? <laughs>
going in a passage that's through an inlet as we uh, approach Jekyll Island and we have to go this way because it's very shallow everywhere and it's pretty rolly right now. Uh, we don't have stabilizers, some boats do, so they're not rolling as much as us, but it's just for a short while. And uh, once we get tucked into the entrance sort of to Jekyll Island, it'll be more like a canal and it'll be much more protected. made it through probably the most challenging part of this trip which was going out an inlet I think it's called on the map the hole but it's just before Jekyll Island yeah, it's and Saint... it wasn't so bad right no it wasn't bad it was St. Andrews Inlet I can see how it could be very bad if you have very strong northeasterlies yeah it would just back everything up and you get huge waves in here but, but even way out there we had to do like this funny v-shape out there and it was you said five feet deep at the yeah. right at out there way out there we only had five feet under us and that's uh that's pretty daunting when you're so far out. And then as soon as you come off the bank, you get 50 feet. So you know that there's a lot of shoaling going on yeah. uh, all over the place. That's so it's, right. it's, uh, it's good to have that one done. Um, it's the trickiest of this little trip. By no, by no means was it you know difficult, as long as you pick your weather right. We just had to uh, understand it before we did it though. Yeah, I guess. Exactly. yeah, exactly. So now we're in Georgia. We've actually now entered our 10th state. <laughs> so I can name them now. We have. Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, and of course Florida, where we spent most of our time. Yeah. And now Georgia. It's great. I mean, yeah. we're we're really getting through the states yeah. one by one and, and enjoying each one as we go. That's right. We won't be in Georgia really long, but uh, it'd be nice to see uh, parts of Georgia as we go through. And I know I saw Jekyll Island many years ago when I was a kid. I don't know how much I remember from that, but I'll be really interested to see it again now. Yeah, so it, uh, well, we'll be there before you know it. Uh, we're just going around the corner and right there is Jekyll Island. So. There it is, yeah. And you can see the, the stream and the different color of water as the tide's moving around. That's right, I'll is, show uh, you that. It's kind of neat. Anyway, that's a sort of a abbreviated report from the Ridge. Okay. just arrived at our final destination at Jekyll Island. It's Jekyll Harbor Marina is where we are and the island is just over there and we're going to explore that this afternoon. We've already booked a little tour and I think this marina has some golf carts we can hop into just to zip around if we need to get somewhere in a hurry but um, it looks like a really nice spot nice and quiet and we had a bit of current coming in we had to go into a slip stern in but Malcolm did a stellar job got us in no problem, I had all the fenders out just in case and uh, we're on floating docks. So even though there's a tide that's fairly significant, we don't have to worry about tying the boat to go up and down. So we're here, it took us about four hours and I'll post the stats on the, web on the uh, video there. Jekyll Island's history is both elaborate and diverse. In 1738, Major Horton received Jekyll Island from the colony's trustees. In addition to his military duties, Horton farmed and supplied Fort Frederica on nearby St. Simons Island with hops and barley for Georgia's first beer. This was the beginning of the plantation era. Later, the Dubignon family, who owned Jekyll from 1790 to 1886, occupied Horton's original home until the mid-1800s. Together with his brother-in-law, Newton Finney, Dubignon sold the island to a group of wealthy northerners in the late 1800s. Some of the country's most elite were next to find Nirvana on Jekyll Island. It was a spot that would offer natural beauty, complete privacy, and excellent weather, escaping brutal northern winters. In 1888, farmland gave way to a grand clubhouse, the richest, most inaccessible club in the world, and the Jekyll Island Club was born. 
it became the most exclusive resort in the nation. It is said its membership represented one-sixth of the world's wealth and no uninvited person could ever visit the island, a rule that remained in effect until 1942. Names included Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, Gould, Crane, Morgan, and Goodyear. In 1947, the state purchased Jekyll Island. Only 35% of the island is developed and the other 65% remain undeveloped. Today it remains a destination for holidays and even destination weddings.